Hey girlfriends, it's Meech. Welcome back to my channel. Now y'all, I know how y'all see this front was looking. I know what y'all thinking. This looks crazy. But you know, your girl's about to go ahead and do her thing and get this frontal all the way together. So if you would like to see how I took this frontal from that thick frontal to this, just keep on watching. All right, y'all, so I've already went ahead and braided her down straight to the back. So, you know, little meek meals. Y'all already know what time it is. I've already also greased her scalp. I used some argan oil uh, and just put it in between each braid. So now I'm just taking some witch hazel and I'm cleaning up her hairline. And the reason why I do this at the very beginning is because I also want her um, cap, because I'm going to do the ball cap method. I want it to lay as flat as possible to protect her hair underneath the wig. So I'm just going to go ahead and get that hairline cleaned up with that witch hazel and this cotton ball. Now I am taking my got to be glue and I'm just gonna go ahead and use that to get all her little baby hairs, all those fine hairs around your hairline. I'm gonna slick those back. And the reason why I wanna do this is because I don't want any hairs coming out underneath her frontal when I cut that lace off. I want the frontal to be the new hairline, okay? So we're just gonna go ahead, we're gonna slick those down and brush those back out of the way. Okay, so now I'm just putting this wig cap on and I'm going to cut two small holes where her ears are and just pull her ears out. And the reason why I want to do them small is because if you cut the holes too big, then you can either cause runs or you can also um, cut them too big. And once you get ready to cut the cap off, it'll just start to roll up and some of her braids will be exposed. So that's why I like to do the holes very small. Now I'm just taking that got to be spray and I'm just going to spray that across the hairline just to secure that ball cap and you don't have to use this. You can use the got to be glue, you can use um, spritz, whatever you prefer. Um, I just like to use this free spray because I know how to use it and it just works best for me. So I'm just going to do that and then I'm just going to take my blow dryer and I'm just going to dry this baby until it is completely dry. You do not want to start cutting that wig cap off if it's not completely dry because again, it's going to start to roll back and then you're gonna have difficulty trying to get it to lay back down. Okay, so while I'm blow drying her hair, I'm just gonna talk about a few things really quickly. So she brought her own wig into me. Usually I like to customize them before the appointment because it allows it to go much quicker, but for whatever reason, that didn't happen this time. So I did have to go ahead and customize it during her appointment, which because this wig is so thick, um, I'm kind of glad that I did because um, it could, I could kind of eyeball it and see how her natural hairline is and how um, I should customize it best to her face. Um, I had to do a lot, a lot of plucking and you guys will see that in this video. Um, but yeah, this wig did not come plucked. It did not come customized and she brought it herself. So now that I just finished cutting off the parts of the ball cap that I did not lay down um, and I just want to get that as close to the scalp as possible so just make sure that you're careful if you're going to use some sharp scissors like I am to cut that off and then I'm just going to take my Anastasia Beverly Hills contour cream kit in the shade deep you guys. I get a lot of questions about which one I use medium or deep. I have both but I really like deep because it gives me a better range uh, for my women of color. And I'm just going to take that shade and I'm just going to start to apply that across her ball cap so that it will blend as nicely as possible with her skin. Okay, excuse us right here, y'all. We was joking because, you know, I be clowning on my clients because I just told her she look a little bald head right here. But that's okay. That's how you're supposed to look. This, this is how your ball cap is supposed to look if it's done correctly. So now I'm just going to take her wig. I'm going to put it on. And at this point, I'm just trying to see how it's going to lay. I'm just trying to adjust it to her head, make sure that it fits okay and that, you know, everything is exactly where I need it to go. So now I'm just going to comb all those hairs back out of the way and I'm actually going to zoom in right here so you guys can see how thick this hairline is. I had to do a lot, a lot of plucking like I said previously um, and that's okay. Sometimes, you know, you just bring what you can and we're going to make something shake. I've showed y'all how to do that with a beauty supply frontal. Now I'm showing you guys how to do that with a wig that is not pre-plucked or anything. And now it's time to get to work, y'all. So as y'all can see, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to start going in with my tweezers. Now, if somebody brings a frontal that's pre-plucked and maybe it just needs a little bit of work done, I'll usually part the very first, um, the very front of the hairline away from where I'm plucking because that's already a little bit plucked. But in this case, the front of this hairline is so dense and so thick, that's not the case. So I'm just going to go right in. Um, at the very front first and I'm just going to thin that out. Now, y'all, if you have a frontal that this 
is this thick excuse me and you are plucking 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 and it's like a lot of hair coming out do not get all afraid you need to take as much hair as you can without you know making bald spots in this frontal because again this does not look natural at all and this is what gives it that wiggy look so I'm just gonna continue to pluck and pluck um, this hairline now I want you guys to pay attention to the way that I'm holding my tweezers if I'm holding my tweezers horizontal which is in relation to the hairline I'm holding them horizontal not vertical they're not going parallel with the hairline so I'm doing that because if I do them parallel and I'm plucking backwards it's going to make ball spots I don't want you guys to get ball spots so just pay attention to the way that I'm holding my tweezers and this is what I was saying earlier when I was talking about me parting the front part of the hairline out. So once I get that front of the hairline to my liking, then I'm going to part that section off. And then I'm just going to um, continue plucking behind that. And that's what's going to give it a gradient effect like the one that I'm showing you guys right now. So now I'm just going to go back in with my Anastasia Beverly Hills palette and I'm just going to use that same shade and I'm going to put that underneath the lace. And the reason why I'm doing this is because again, once I lay that lace down, I need it to be exact same color as her skin tone. I need it to be the exact same color as that wig cap so that this flows seamlessly. Here I'm just laying that lace on her skin and I'm just trying to see how it looks. Does it melt right in even before I lay the glue down? Um, does it still look a little light? So sometimes you can really kind of tell. So right here I see that it still is just a slight bit off. So I'm just going to use just the residue that's left on that brush and I'm just going to put it on top of the lace. And the reason why I like this ABH so much is because this stuff is so buildable so that you can kind of use a little bit and kind of check it out use a little bit and check it out instead of you know you put a little bit on there and then there's no going back so that's why i like to use this anastasia beverly hill so much okay so now i'm just going to go ahead and lay her adhesive down and i'm going to do this in three parts i'm going to start with the middle and then i'm going to work on her left side and then her right side to finish it off now um, this just makes it a little bit easier to control once you're laying the wig um, lace into place um, the adhesive that i'm using is actually um, something that i'm working on right now so i'll fill you guys in on that once I get everything to my liking and I'm ready to you know go ahead and announce that that but nevertheless um, I'm going to do this in three layers so once that first layer dries then I'm going to lay another layer on now the thing that I see people have the most problems with with the glue is not letting the first layer dry down not even dry but become clear before they apply another layer another issue that I see people have is not smoothing the adhesive all the way out so you have to smooth this stuff out you don't want chunks of white because there are some places where you put a lot of glue and you didn't kind of smooth it out so just make sure that you're paying attention to the fine details So now I'm just going to line her wig up and I am going to begin to lay it down. Now when you line your wig up, you want to have like a very small amount of lace in front of where the glue is. And that's because sometimes the, t the glue, once you start styling or whatever, the lace tends to slide back just a smidge. So you want to have it maybe like not even a, a centimeter y'all like really like a mi two millimeters in front of the glue it doesn't have to be like you know two inches in front of the glue because then it's going to be lifting in the front you just want to make sure that you have a very thin amount um, in front of the glue just in case it slides back there's no glue exposed And now I'm just going in on my sides and I'm doing the exact same thing that I did to the middle. I'm going to put those three layers and then I'm going to wait until it um, becomes clear and I'm going to go ahead and lay that lace down. Now as you guys see I'm using my rat tail comb and I'm kind of like combing it back. I'm not pressing it down with the comb. That's how you're going to get like white residue. Um, you're going to get glue seeping through because even though it's dried down clear this glue is still not all the way dry yet. Um, it's still tacky so just keep 
that in mind when you're combing it back like this. You're just combing the hair back and kind of laying the lace into place. You're not combing the lace into the glue. Now here I'm just cutting off that excess lace. I know a lot of people like to do this prior to laying the lace down in the glue. Um, I, on the other hand, do not because I find that when I cut sometimes before I lay it down, then once I start to lay it down in the glue, then one side may not be all the way to the ear. Then I have to figure out how to adjust it or what have you. Um, whatever way you like to do it is perfectly fine. Um, I'm not here to tell you what's the right or wrong way to go about stuff. Whatever makes you feel comfortable. So now I'm just taking my scissors and I've cut a little strip um, right in the middle just to kind of help me get to the hairline with my eyebrow razors. And I'm going to use that to cut the lace. I like this because it kind of helps you to cut jagged um, because it's really hard to cut in a straight line with these. Uh, but just still be careful because these are sharp and you don't want to cut yourself or anybody else. And one way that I've kind of figured out to help you cut easier with these is if you pull um, the front of the lace part where obviously it's not glued down. If you cause some tension right there and then start cutting, then it'll pretty much cut fairly easily. So now that I've cut that first piece of lace off, I'm just going and I'm kind of pulling on the front, kind of messing around with it just to see if any pieces of lace come up, if there's any pieces that need to be cut off or that I think they should be glued down instead. So that's the time that I'm doing this right now. So here I'm just sectioning out the area where her baby hairs are going to go and I'm just going to use a super thin section you guys. I don't want this to be too thick because I don't want any you know crazy thick looking baby hair and the reason why I'm parting this out now before I lay the elastic band down is because once I lay the elastic band down with them already sectioned off by the time I take that elastic band off these hairs will already be laid in place. So once I get that mousse on there everything is just going to be easy to lay and just go on to the next step instead of trying to fight with the baby hairs to get them to lay in the direction that you want them to lay. So I always do this before I apply the mousse to it because you know if you take too long with that mousse then the wig can start to lift and other things. So now I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to get that elastic band on there and then I'm going to part her hair where she wants her part which is in the middle and then I'm going to go in with my blow dryer and I'm just going to start blow drying it because her hair is still a little damp from whenever I bleached her knots. Also this will give me a little bit of time for her baby hairs and that lace to set in place before I need to go in with the mousse and start styling. So because the frontal section on her wig was so dense and so thick, it was kind of difficult to bleach her knots. Um, there was, after several times of me checking, still like black knots everywhere. So um, they actually got over processed in some places, which is why it's kind of like this brassy look in her middle part. But we're just going to go in. We're going to clean that up. I'm going to take some black hair color and I'm going to just go in. I'm going to clean that up. And I'm also going to take some of my... Um, color corrector spray which I don't think that I showed that clip in this video um, but I am going to go in and clean that up and you guys will see that at the end as well.
So now that we're getting that elastic band removed, I'm going to go ahead and use my eyebrow razor and I'm going to cut her some baby hairs. You can use whatever you want to use. You can even you can use scissors for these if you feel more comfortable. Um, but yeah, I'm going to cut them fairly short because I feel like they're easier to lay and then they look a little bit more natural when you cut them shorter. So yeah, I'm going to cut them pretty short in length just so that they um, are fairly easy whenever I'm getting ready to put that mousse down and lay them down. Here I'm just using that Afro G mousse. This is one of my favorites and I'm just going to lay this down. Um, I'm also going to show you guys the other side where I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. Optional, you do not have to have these if you do not want. Again, I always try to ask my clients if they want them or not. Some of them do, some of them don't. So, this is her baby hairs and how I have them laid. Now, I'm just going to get her scarf and I'm going to put it down um, just to set her baby hairs in place and then I'm going to begin styling. Y'all, this stuff right here is heaven in a bottle. This camera's dry oil. If you've never used this, please go try it. I love this stuff so, so much. This is not a sponsored video, but I love camera's products. I have so, so many of them. Um, so, yeah, just be sure to try this dry oil, especially when you're doing like straightening and um, just different kind of heat styles. Okay, so as I get closer to the top of her head, because I want this to lay as flat as possible, I'm going to go in with my hot comb and my wax stick just to get everything as sleek and as flat as possible. Now, I always hear people say that they don't like the plug-in um, hot comb because it doesn't get hot enough. I just want to know which one y'all using because this one gets really, really hot. It gets so hot. Like, I can't use it without burning myself. I be trying to be super careful not to burn my clients because I know how hot this thing gets. But I love this thing so much. I couldn't even imagine trying to use my hot comb that I have with my stove because I know that gets hot. It gets hotter than this and mm -mm, I be done singe my hair. I ain't got time.
Okay, y'all, so here I'm just going to remove her scarf, and then I'm going to comb out her baby hair so they're a little bit softer. They're not so hard and stuck in place from the mousse. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and correct her part, and then I will show you guys the finished product um, in pictures here in a second. Thanks so much for watching, y'all, and shout out to this pretty lady for allowing me to film um, her install. I appreciate you so much, girl. Um, please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see y'all in the next video. God willing. Bye. Bye.